let's not beat around the bush. Boston is freaking expensive. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it isn't because it absolutely is. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, I love it, but it's also expensive. So in this video, we're breaking down the cost of living, the cost of housing, just how expensive Boston is if you're moving to the Boston area. So let's get into it. Hey, welcome to the video. My name is Jacob Bystrup, and if you're moving to the Boston area and coming to this beautiful city and you want help with that process, give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. I am a real estate professional, love new clients that I get to work with who are coming to Boston for the first time and sharing this city with you. My favorite part of my job. So if you want help navigating this insane real estate market in Boston, let's get in touch and let's get that ball rolling. So Boston living and the cost of living for 2022 in Boston. If you are looking at house prices, condo prices, apartment rentals on Zillow or realtor.com and losing your mind at some of these prices you're seeing, trust me, I understand. I am originally from St. Louis. I'm from the Midwest. The Midwest is where I first started my real estate career. So trust me, I get it. Half a million dollars, a million dollars doesn't go as far as you would think in Boston. I mean, some cities and some suburbs, a million dollars gets you a palace in the Boston area. That's not so much the case. So we're breaking down what it looks like to live in Boston, what it costs to live in Boston and to move to the Boston area for buying, for renting, different expenses, taxes, you know, what does it really cost you to live in Boston in 2022? So like I said, we all know Boston is expensive to live in. We're definitely not the most expensive city to live in though. So if you look at different lists, I took a look at a couple of them um, before this video, you know, we usually are in that top 10 for the US, you know, expensive cities to live in, but we're not towards the top of that list. You know, I mean, cities like Honolulu, New York, San Francisco, San Jose, those, you know, pretty consistently outrank Boston for being much more expensive to live in. So we're not the most expensive, but we definitely are, you know, one of those top 10 cities for the cost of living. And you know, where we rank on that list, there's a lot that goes into it. The cost of buying, the cost of renting, healthcare, taxes, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into what exactly the cost of living could look like. I mean, there's one list I took a look at by Rocket Mortgage. We were number seven in the country as far as being the most expensive to buy a house in. So we definitely do make that list for being an expensive city. And it's not just Boston. Unfortunately, the state of Massachusetts does rank pretty high as far as the cost of living index. You know, again, we are towards the top of that list along with Hawaii, California, New York, Oregon, you know, Massachusetts as a state can also be pretty expensive. Now, if you look at the cost of renting, we unfortunately do rank higher. Boston is usually in the top five, if not the top three, most expensive cities to rent an apartment in. Again, San Francisco, New York City, those are usually the top two. Boston isn't one or two, but we are notoriously expensive to rent in. Now, the thing I do wanna point out is that it really depends on where you're looking, which neighborhood you wanna be in, which building you're looking at. I mean, a studio in Alston could cost you 1,300 a month. A studio in Seaport could be upwards of $3,000. It depends on what you're looking for, which part of town you wanna be in, what kind of amenities, what kind of you know area you wanna live in, what you value with either buying or renting. And that'll you know help you get an idea of how expensive is it really gonna be. You know, if you're looking at living in an older, you know, brownstone walk up in an older building, that's never gonna be as expensive as one of the newer luxury buildings in Seaport, in Fenway, where you are looking at basically Manhattan level prices for those apartments. Now, I will get into some averages and give you an idea of price in Boston for houses, condos, and apartments. But what I wanna point out is that real estate is very micro. It is a very niche market. You know, one city from another are gonna be very different. One neighborhood versus another, one street versus the next street over. And even in Boston, one condo building compared to another are like two different markets. Sure, they follow the same overall trends and patterns, but in different buildings, you will see different prices, different trends. You know, it's really a different market and different buyers and sellers in some cases within each one of those. I mean, if you're looking in the Boston area and buying a single family house, if you're looking in Everett, for example, the median of a single family there, about half a million dollars. 
in Brookline, that median is over $2 million. Different areas, different markets, different houses you will see in each one of those, so that means different prices. So to give some context, like I said, I will give some numbers. So current listings, the median of a single family house listed in Boston right now is $877,000. For a condo, a little bit lower, the median list price is $839,000. Quick side note, when I provide statistics, I generally favor the median if it's available, not the average. Those are two different things. The reason being the average is more easily manipulated by a couple high outliers. So it'll be a higher number than the median if you're looking at list prices and sale prices because a couple very high outliers, $15 million sales, $20 million sales, will manipulate the average and it gets skewed to the right. The median, in my opinion, is more accurate for market data. So like I said, in Boston, median list price right now, 877 for a house and 839 for a condo. Now, the most expensive areas you will see that are Beacon Hill, Back Bay, Seaport. Those are the notably most expensive neighborhoods in Boston. You will see higher median prices, higher median sales, higher median household income as well, where you could easily see you know, the high $100,000 price range per household in those select neighborhoods. And those numbers coming directly from the MLS system I use. Now, looking at the Greater Boston area, these numbers coming from the Greater Boston Association of Realtors, in the whole Boston area, the median single family sale is $700,000. And right now in Greater Boston, for single family houses, you're looking at an inventory level of one and a half months. And for condos in Greater Boston, the median sale is 609 with current inventory levels of two and a half months. So condo prices lower than houses and more inventory in Greater Boston. That's the whole Boston market. Now for the Boston Metro, the median of a single family, a little bit higher, we're at 750, with inventory of 2.6 months for single family. So in Boston, there is more inventory for single family homes than in the greater Boston area. For condos in Boston, the median is $680,000 with an inventory level of 3.6 months. So the way to interpret that when you compare the city of Boston to the greater Boston Metro, more supply, less demand. That's why our months of inventory is a little bit higher in Boston than out in the suburbs. So in the suburbs, you have more demand and fewer houses for sale compared to the city of Boston. So that's why at least these days in this market, the further outside the city you go, you will see lower levels of active inventory. So more demand, less inventory, higher inventory turnover for the houses and condos being listed outside of Boston. Anytime you hear somebody reference months of inventory in the housing market, it's not as complex as they're gonna make it seem. It's simply a measurement of comparing supply with demand. How do those compare? If inventory is less than six months or so, it is a seller's market. Demand is outpacing supply. If it is above six months, that is typically a buyer's market. You have less demand and more supply of inventory on the market. That's pretty much the basics of how to look at that. Now, real estate prices aside, let's talk about the job market in Boston. We obviously have a very healthy, very strong job market. That is what brings people to Boston. A lot of relocation buyers are coming because their job requires it. They got a new job, they're moving cities with their current company, or they're joining a new company in Boston. And you have a lot of very strong sectors in Boston. So, I mean, some of the big ones here, we have finance and consulting, tech and engineering, private equity, education, healthcare is a big one. I mean, these are all very big industries, lots of opportunity, lots of jobs, and lots of people coming to Boston because of these industries. Looking at some of the biggest employers by industry, healthcare, you got Mass Gen, Brigham and Women's, the Children's Hospital, Finance, there's Fidelity, Liberty Mutual and State Street as kind of the big three there. Education, you have plenty of universities around Boston. Northeastern, MIT, BU, 
Harvard. I mean, that is again, what brings a lot of people here for work and for education. People don't just move to Boston to work at those universities. They come here to study. That's what I did. I went to Northeastern. You know, we have a really strong market for students, especially in Boston. Those students come here, they move to Boston, they stay in Boston post-grad because of the strong job market. So, you know, that's just another great thing about living in Boston. Now, moving on to the cost of living with bills, electricity, heating, internet, what does it cost to live per month in Boston? I get this question a lot and there really isn't, you know, an average I can give because it depends so much, depends on where you are, how big your place is, you know, are you living in a brownstone from the 1800s that's not as energy efficient or are you living in a newer built luxury high rise that'll be much more energy efficient compared to the older brownstone. You know, during the winter time, you're going to lose a lot more heat in one of those older brick buildings. During the summertime, you might need to purchase an AC unit to put in the window because some of these places are not going to have air conditioning. So obviously the older brownstone is gonna be much less energy efficient. You're gonna have higher cost of heating, higher cost of cooling in the summertime. And honestly, you might have to go out and buy an AC unit or multiple AC units for the windows because some of those older buildings do not come with air conditioning. So yes, obviously that's going to impact your bill for heating and for electric, but also if you gotta go out and buy an AC unit, you gotta think about that cost beforehand if your building does not have AC. Now, the taxes here with buying in Boston. Something you wanna think about and a question I get asked a lot. So Boston assesses both real and personal property. There are different classifications for property in Boston. Now with property taxes, property is classified for different ways. There's residential, open space, commercial, and industrial. If you're moving to Boston and buying a house or a condo, that's going to be residential. Real estate taxes make up the biggest proportion of the revenue going to the city of Boston. That's how they make their money and that's how they pay for certain things through assessing real estate taxes. And of the residential taxes, the condo market is the biggest proportion of it. It's over 40%. The reason being, there's a lot of condo sales in Boston, so a lot of the residential real estate in Boston is in the form of condos, not so much single family houses. You do have single family and you do have multifamily, but a lot of the residential taxes come through condos. Now, what is the tax rate for residential? It is $10.67 per thousand dollars of assessed value. And this is assessed value, not market value. So if you pay half a million for a place, that's 500 grand that you paid, that's market value, not exactly assessed value. Market value and assessed value, you know, should be similar sometimes. They might be close, but they're not the same number. So keep that in mind with assessed value because that is what determines your tax bill. So $10.67 of assessed value. What that means, if your home or your condo is assessed at, let's say $500,000, your tax bill is gonna be around $5,300. Let's say it's assessed at $1 million. Your tax bill is gonna be a little bit over $10,000. So that's how that works. It's 1067 per thousand dollars of assessed value. Now, another thing with the real estate taxes, if you ever hear of proposition two and a half, that relates to the city of Boston and basically the way they can increase their real estate taxes. The basics that you need to know is that your property taxes cannot go up by more than two and a half percent year over year unless otherwise voted. So that's kind of the, the ceiling to the property tax increase is that it cannot go up more than two and a half percent year over year. So if your concern is, oh my God, what if your property taxes double from one year to the next because of proposition two and a half, that should not be the case. So I hope this video was helpful for providing at least a little bit of context for what the cost of living is in Boston. If you want help with the process of moving to Boston, relocating to this new city, buying, renting, whatever it is, and you want help with that process, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, that is what I am here for. Love the reach outs that I get from YouTube and love helping all of my clients relocate to the Boston area. So if there is anything I can do to help you out with that process, let's get in touch. So thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Take care and I will see you in the next video right here on the Living Boston channel.